Hello guys, I think I'm live and to get us started, please put in the chat box there. Let's see how far afield people are. So tell me your name and where you are watching from. And while you're doing that, I'll introduce the session. So I'm Mark Newton. I am the founder of the School of Photography and I'm working today together with BenQ Monitors and with Calibrite, um, Calibrite, uh, color correct, Calibrite monitor calibrations of uh, equipment and Clifton cameras. And at the end of this session, you have got a lovely discount from them products. All right, and I'll tell you that at the end. This session is going to be called this. This session is called removing objects in photoshop all right now we're going to look at three different ways to do that because there is not one way of doing it all right so we're going to have a little bit of a crash course here we're going to look at three separate ways of removing objects in photoshop okay a couple of things before we start um we've got hello from essex <laughs> so that's not that far afield at all from me that is literally just down the road and we've got someone from Greece here coming in um, so yeah so we are uh, just firstly you're gonna on your screen you've got a picture of me and in a minute I'm gonna put my screen up right if you want to see my screen for Photoshop you want to see it bigger there is a line in between you just click on that line and you drag it up or down and that will enable you to uh, see this screen bigger doesn't happen on every device. It depends if you're on a PC, you can do it. If you're on a mobile phone, I don't think it works and things like that. But if you're on a device that can do it, that's what you do. Um, we are gonna do them free images, like I say, and then at the end, we're gonna do a Q&A. So at the end, you can ask me questions about Photoshop or anything photography-wise, if you want to, it doesn't bother me. You can ask me them questions at the end. All right, um, so, there is a few people coming through here. We've got 225 people currently watching, so welcome aboard. Um, without further ado, I think we should go straight into Photoshop. So I'm gonna share my screen now, and we're gonna go into Photoshop. Now, the first session, I'm hoping you can see my screen. This is a bit different to when I do YouTube Live because I can't actually see what you can see, but I'm assuming that you can see my screen now, right? Um, <clears throat> so the first part of this session, we're just gonna look at using the tools, the, the general tools to remove stuff, all right? Now we're gonna use this image here. It's a long exposure picture that I took in in Essex, as a matter of fact, and in Canvey Island in Essex, if anyone's been there. Um, and if I just hide this group, that's what's in the picture, loads of boys, a boat, this power cable, and it just clutters up the scene. And by using the simple te techniques that I'm gonna show you, we can remove them like that, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new layer. So I'm gonna hide this now, so we're back to the original image. I'm gonna click on the original picture, which is this one underneath, and I'm gonna click on add a new layer, which is this little icon down in the layers panel here. So when you are removing objects, no matter what tool you're gonna to use, it's always a good idea to use another layer. Try not to work directly onto the image because that is what's called a destructive move. When you're working in Photoshop, you want to be doing as much as many non-destructive moves as possible because it's very easy to then delete them if you get things wrong which you can do quite easily in photoshop um, you can if you're working non-destructively on separate layers very easy to to uh, correct basically um we've got someone from texas here no names though i've just got from texas so if you are if you're putting something in that chat box you you should put your name i don't actually see your name so put your name so we've got someone from texas and i don't know who their name is but welcome aboard um right let's go over here then into photoshop and i am just going to zoom in by using my navigator tool here 
and we're going to start removing these objects here like this post and these boys and you know this kind of stuff so over in the layers palette good idea name your layers double click on the word layer there and i'm going to name this one boys which i believe is spelled like that boys and post press enter and there we go right and so sorry i'm, I'm looking i'm trying to see what i can see it so sorry there's things coming through right the patch tool easy right this one is probably the easiest removal tool that you've got in photoshop right it's over here in your toolbox you hover over if you don't know what these tools are called just hover your mouse over the tool and it will tell you what it's called that one's obviously the patch tool so i'm going to select the patch tool we've got this post here i'm going to draw around this post and include in the reflection finish the selection click within the selection drag it across to an area next to it and you can see them lines there of the water right so what you do is you match them up you just go up and down up and down and you match them up you release and it patches up that area okay we press Control and d we deselect and we've got rid of a post this patch is as easy as that's how easy it is to use the patch tool right now you do need to make sure that you've got certain settings on your patch tool and that is over in the options bar at the top here so you need to make sure that you've got this one here selected which is new selection you need to make sure you've got content where selected and in structure you put four in color you put four and over here you tick sample all layers now this is a one hour session on removing stuff in photoshop so i'm just telling you to put four in there and four in there because i know it works it certainly works for things like this over in the photoshop course which i'm going to tell you about later we go into much more depth into the into this kind of stuff but for now you want a quick fix they're the settings that you add into um the options bar when you select the patch tool let's do this one here circle around it grab it go left or right that looks good now that one's gone grab the patch tool again grab that one and this time i'm going to go that way so i can expand the line release control and d to deselect and again let's get that one there uh, match the line up easy press control and d let's do this one here as well and remove it over to that side release control and d to deselect look and already look what's happening it's just really quick it's a really quick tool to use the patch tool and the the thing to to remember with the patch tool though is it works a lot better on a smooth surface like this if you've got the patch tool and you've got a person with a tree or something in the background there's a lot of texture it's other techniques that you're going to need to use, which we will cover a bit later on in this session. OK. Right now. So. Just to speed things up. You can imagine that all of the rest of these is, uh, are done. Actually, I'm going to show you one more thing because this happens, especially in long exposures. You have things that go over the horizon and the patch tool does actually work with things that go over the horizon so i'm going to just select this one drag it across now the key to this is that you match the horizon so we get that to the horizon point you release and it's gone let's hide and bring it back hide and bring it back okay easy isn't it let's press Control and a zero to full screen now the next thing that we are going to look at is removing this boat here the patch tool is not going to work for this boat because it's a bigger object and it's really close to textured stuff you know like this um i think that's a jetty that's going out there and this thing over here as well so the patch tool is not going to work so we're going to use another classic 
removal tool in Photoshop for this, the clone stamp tool. I'm going to press Control and plus and zoom in, press down my space bar and move it to the center there. Take a sip of my blackcurrant juice. And create a new layer. Like I said before, when you're removing objects, new layers, always new layers. And even like I was doing before there with all of them boys, you could do each one of them on a new layer, especially if you're new to it and you're just practicing. Because if you get one wrong, you only have to delete that one layer, not all of the boys that you've removed. Right, let's click on a new layer. Let's double click on that layer name and let's call this one a boat. Okay, now the first thing that I want to do is I want to create a selection. And the reason I want to create a selection is so that I don't put any clone stamping over on this jetty here. So you make a selection so that when you clone stamp, it's only going to go into that selection. To do that, I'm going to use a tool called the polygonal lasso tool. And that's this one here. The polygonal lasso tool enables you to make a selection but with lines okay simple as that so i'm going to press Control and d here to deselect that and up the top in the feather of this tool this is the options bar i'm going to put five pixels in and what that will do is that will automatically give me a nice feather around the selection so let's uh let's make this selection so i'm going to click 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 and this is why i'm using the linear tool because that area there is very narrow so i want to try my best to try and keep away from that jetty so let's do that let's come around like this there is a reflection here so i need to make sure that that's within this selection as well close up that selection when you see that zero there not zero sorry when you see that circle there you click on your mouse and it closes the selection next thing is to select the clone stamp tool and that is over here again in our toolbox and it's this one here we're going to select the clone stamp tool and we need to get our options correct which is at the top here so again where it's a bit of a crash course we've got one hour so i'm just going to tell you the settings that are good to use when you're clone stamping stuff on an image like this. You want your mode to be normal. The opacity we will change as we use it, but um, for now we want quite a low opacity, maybe about there, all right? The flow I'm going to leave at 100% and I'm going to make sure that aligned is ticked and that is so that when I take a sampled area and it clones it, it moves it together okay it aligns the uh, movements of your mouse and then over in sample you need all layers selected okay so now i've got all my settings i'm going to come down to my image and i'm going to hold down the alt key and i'm going to take an area to sample from and i think roughly about here will be quite a good area to sample from so you hold down the alt key and you wait for this symbol to appear and you click on your image. Then I'm gonna come over to where I'm gonna clone. And remember, it's only gonna happen within this selection. And you can see roughly where it's gonna be within that selection. Now, if I hold down the Alt key and right click, I can change my brush settings. So I want a nice soft brush like that. But I'm gonna increase the size slightly like that and then there like that match that line up and i'm going to just come in from this side very softly like that and i'm going to do the same the other side and you can see what's going to happen hopefully they're going to blend together nicely all right hold down the alt key click around about here this is quite a good place to take a sample from and then blend in from this side as well okay here we go and again and again and you just keep doing it basically until 
this boat disappears. And there we go. And it's this top bit here, which is gonna be the difficult bit. So we just have to be careful and do our best there. There we go, that's blending in nicely as a matter of fact. Okay, and the next thing to do, uh, let's hide it and bring it back and see what's happening. And it's not done a bad job already, but now I'm gonna deselect, get rid of that selection and tidy up them edges, just like this by pressing Control and D to deselect. Then I'm gonna hold down the Alt key again, sample an area, there we go, and blend in nicely like this, just to really soften it off. I'm gonna match this, see this line, this white line? I'm gonna match this just like that, there we go. And then they've got a nice blue line here, like a darker blue line. And I'm gonna bring that across. And there you go, really. I mean, you can tidy this up as much as you want as you're working, but that's looking not bad at all. And incidentally, if you want these images to, to work on yourself, this recording, by the way, is gonna be emailed to you. There's gonna be a link to the recording. The pictures that we've, we're using today is all in the Photoshop course. I'm gonna show you that a bit later on. So you can actually download these pictures and you can work along with me. But that's okay for now. I can see that it's gone over a little bit of the jetty thing here, all right? So look at this area here and I'm gonna hide it and bring it back. Can you see that it's just gone over there a bit? Now, you could leave that, no one's really gonna notice, but if you're me, you don't leave it because you're a perfectionist and it does my own head in, but I just have to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mask it off. So you make sure that's selected. You click on the add a layer mask icon down the bottom, it adds a mask and black now removes, black removes, white uh, reveals when you're using masks. I'm gonna select the brush tool. I'm, I'm on black as a foreground color. I need to make the brush a bit smaller and a bit harder actually. So again, that is right clicking and, and holding down the Alt key and then you just move your mouse backwards and forwards until you get it to where you want it to be. And then there we go, look at that, lovely. And that gets rid of that bit. Now, I'm not sure the resolution that this is projecting and whether you can actually see that, but I can certainly see that it's very, very fine. But when you are removing objects, obviously you need it to be fine because well, you don't want no one to know that it was there in the first place. So I'm gonna hide that boat and bring it back. And there you go, the boat disappears and the reflection of that boat disappears. And that's that bit. The next thing, let's press control and zero to uh, full screen it again. The next thing that we are going to remove is this line here, this power cable. They get in your way, don't they? They get in your way, especially when you're doing long exposures, landscape shots, you know, they're gonna be there. Um, it's actually really easy to move, but there is, there's a lovely technique to do it where you mix a work path with the spot healing brush tool. So, so far we've used the patch tool, we've used the clone stamp tool, classic removal tools, and that's what I'm trying to get to you in this first part of this session. And the next one is the spot healing brush tool. Again, another classic tool to get rid of stuff, um, but we're gonna mix it with a work path. So what I need to do, first of all, is create a new layer, and then I'm gonna name this one Power Cable, like that, press enter, take a sip of my drink, and oof, nearly 250 people watching now. Welcome aboard if you've just joined us. Now, I need to use the pen tool to create a work path, and that's over here in your toolbox, the pen tool here. Now, using the pen tool, can be a bit of a pain. It's not something that you uh, can pick up very easily, I'm afraid. You do have to practice with it. But something like this, which is one line, is actually quite easy and it's a good place to practice, to be fair. So I'm gonna create a point at the top. 
I'm going to press control and the plus sign to zoom in. And OK, here we go. We're going to create an anchor point at the top like that, just by clicking with a pen tool. That's the top of the power cable. And I'm going to create another one down the bottom here, at the bottom of the cable. Let's zoom out a little bit. And what you can see is created like a straight line, really, from the top to the bottom. Now, obviously, cables, well, they curve, don't they, just like this. So what I need to do is create another anchor point in the middle of this and, uh, well, and curve the line. So to do that, you need to find a, a point that is going to be good to add it to, which is normally in the middle of the bendy, the, well, where the biggest gap is, where the biggest gap between this line and the cable is. That's normally a good place to put your next anchor point. So I'm thinking about here, like that. All right. Now it's zooming in time again. And you have to hold down the control or the command key as you're moving these anchor points. So these points here, they're called anchor points. And if you hold down the control key, your mouse turns into an arrow or your cursor turns into an arrow. You click on one of these anchor points and I can move it about wherever I want it to be. So let's put it there for now. Actually, maybe up a little bit as a matter of fact, about there. And then these are the anchor arms. Again, hold down the control key till this arrow appears. Click on the anchor arm and you can sort of bend this work path to however you want it to be. Um, so I'm going to come down and bend it like that. And now you can see that it's curving over that power cable, but we need to see if it's done the same at the top. Yeah, that's not looking too bad at all. I'm going to get this anchor point, press the control and command key and move it across. So it's right over that power cable as best as it can be. Come down. OK, there you go. All right. So. That's a very quick uh, description of using the pen tool and anchor points and anchor arms. All right. Now, what I've got is a work path. So it's not a line, I've not drawn a line, I've not painted a line, I've created what's called a work path. Now what I need to do is replace that work path with a brush stroke. And this is where Photoshop is absolutely brilliant, okay? So I'm gonna come over to this tool here, which is the Spot Healing Brush tool. I'm gonna to come over to my line. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key. And I'm going to make my brush, sorry, alt and right click, alt and right click is what you need to do for this. Um, and I'm going to make my brush as soft as it can be. And I'm going to make it quite big, actually. So about there, and I might even make it bigger. Because I've got a soft edge, I want a nice big brush. So that is the brush size that's going to lay over your work path. Once you've done that, we go over to paths over in your uh, panels over here. I'm going to click on path and then down here there is a little symbol and that symbol it basically says stroke path with brush. So it's going to stroke this path with the brush that you have chosen. In our case it's the spot healing brush tool. You click it like that and the line disappears fingers crossed because what we can see actually is the work path still there. All I need to do is deselect that work, work path and I do that by just clicking anywhere in this um, panel and the line disappears, all right? It's as simple as that. It's like magic. Let's go over to the layers palette again and let's hide and bring it back, hide and bring it back. I mean, it's a lovely technique and it's a lovely tool to use. Now, there may well be areas that you need to tidy up. Let's have a look here. Yeah, so you can see that it, there's just little bits here that it hasn't quite got. And all you do with that is you grab the clone stamp tool and yeah, the opacity. Yeah, let's leave the opacity there. Leave all the settings as it was before. Press the Alt key and make the brush a little bit smaller. And that's Alt and right click. And now I'm going to just press Alt and left click to sample an area and then go over it like that. And there you go. And that's just tidying that up. 
that's it really that's how you get rid of a power cable let's hide it bring it back hide it bring it back and i'm going to press Control and zero like that and let's hide all of these layers so in the space of i don't know how long this has taken 10 15 minutes i have got rid of all of that and cleaned up this picture lovely all right so that's the end of session one which was a little crash course if you like into the main removal tools i'm going to shut that down now and we're going to move on to the next session or the next part of this session i'm not going to save that uh oh i didn't want to do that <laughs> i'll do that at the end um the next part of this session is adding i'm calling it adding right adding is as good as removing and the reason I'm calling it that is because that's actually what you're doing a lot of the time when you're removing objects is you're adding stuff. Think of the clone stamp tool that we just used there. We actually cloned an area and placed it over um, the bow, you know. So most of the time you do actually add stuff. And this example shows you a real literal way of adding something that you take from somewhere else on the image to to hide something that you don't want all right so there it is that's what i'm hiding here this was a picture i took obviously in a car park in an old car park um it's composed quite nicely you know i like it we've got all of these lines coming in it's got that kind of um symmetrical look you know except for this thing here well this is what photoshop is for isn't it photoshop is to get rid of things like that and make your pictures look better so I did that by well, showing you what I'm going to show you next. So I'm going to hide this now and I'm going to hide the color grading and that's the original raw file. And I'm going to select the image, the original image underneath here. Again, we need to add a new layer. So I'm going to add a new layer here. And the next thing that we're going to do is copy an area of this picture to do that. I'm going to press control and the plus sign to zoom in and i'm going to come over to here like that and to put it totally in a nutshell we're going to copy this area here and we're going to paste it over this area here right that is exactly what we're going to do and it is really simple i'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool again Yep, we just looked at it before. This time I'm going to have a feather of one pixel, not five, because I'm going to soften off the edges myself with the masking um, in a minute. So now we've come over to here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. That's it. And then I'm going to copy this whole area here. So let's click there. Let's come down to about there. Come all the way out. Make sure you've got the. Um, the light that's coming through that that section as well and then let's just copy this whole area all right it don't matter if we've got more than we need because we can mask it off in a minute okay let's close that selection i've got a selection around an area that i want to copy now i want to copy from this layer here so you need to select the layer that you want to copy from that's really really important so i'm going to select that layer I'm going to press Control and C for copy. We all know that Control and C or Command and C and Control and V. If you want an easier way or not an easy way, actually, if you want another way, you can actually go edit and copy and edit and paste. But obviously that takes ages. So Control and C, I've just copied that area. And now I want to paste it into a new layer. So I click the layer that I want to paste it in and I press Control and V and it pastes it in there and that's very small you probably can't see but it has pasted it in there okay so now i need to use the move tool which is up here in your um toolbox i'm going to grab the move tool i'm going to come over to the part that i've just um copied i'm going to hold down the shift key i'm going to click on that part and i'm going to move it across now holding down the shift key um basically makes it go across dead straight so that's why i'm doing it like that 
So let's put it over this image and we'll put it about there. So we've got roughly the same amount of space each side because we can blend it in in a minute. So let's do that there. Okay, now if you want to be crude, you could leave it like that and if we go control and zero. Yeah, some people have noticed and some people wouldn't, but we don't want to be crude. We want to be perfect. So we come back over to here and we're going to adjust it. And to adjust it, you can do one of two things. You can use the nudge tools here, which is your arrows on your keyboard, or we can press control and T, which is free transform. You can also go to edit free transform. And that enables you to resize and move it about as you see fit. Now, firstly, I think that um, we need to maybe come across a bit there, maybe do a little bit of twisting of this. So let's twist that selection very slightly. Maybe not, as a matter of fact, I'm going to press Control and Z. Um, I think it's looking all right at the top, but not at the bottom. And it's looking better over this side than that side. And that's to do with obviously perspective, it's going off into a distance. So I'm going to hold down the control key and this arrow appears, this white arrow appears as you go over the corners. And as you hold down the control key, you can actually move it about and warp the, warp the selection. So now I can match that up there, hold down the control key again, match that up there and match that up there. And that doesn't look too bad. Let's click the tick at the top to apply it. And that's done all right. I'm going to nudge it down slightly. And again, that is okay. Control and T. Let's come up a little bit on there. I mean, you need you really want to be like pixel perfect if you can. Out there. Let's click the tick again at the top. Yeah, it keeps moving every time. So what's happening here is because I'm working on a very low, well, so not very low res, but it's a lower res image. It's the pixels are not um, clicking in how I want them to, as a matter of fact. That's better. Okay, that's good enough. So what I've done is I've copied from one area, pasted it over here, and then used the free transform tools to merge it, sorry, to move it and resize it so that I'm matching up these lines. The next thing to do is to use a mask to blend these areas in around that edge and that edge there. So to do that, we make sure that our layer is selected. We click the mask tool here. We go and grab a brush. Black removes, white reveals. Remember, black removes, white reveals. We kind of come over to our image, alt and right click, and I can make a bigger brush or a smaller brush, softer brush or a harder brush and i'm going to have a nice soft brush to start with i'm going to have a very low opacity as well to start with and i'm going to try and blend these areas in here here we go there we go just like that and see this area here that's like a solid um, line going down i'm actually going to leave that i'm not going to blend that in because it will match these patches of paint that are already on the car park wall. So I'm going to leave that one as it is, but I am going to blend the bottom part in so that it looks like it's supposed to look. And then I'm going to blend this in down the bottom. There we go. And again, I think I might leave this line here. I'm going to blend this in at the top. And I'm going to blend this in down here. Let's have a bigger brush for this one. That's it. Oops. That was too much. You see, I've gone a bit too far there. I'll do it on purpose now. I've gone a bit too far. All I need to do is press the X key. Watch this area here. The X key, it flicks from black to white. So white um, reveals and black removes. I want to now reveal this layer. So I'm going to come across again and bring that back again. Then I'm going to get the black. Uh, I just press X, so I'm on black paint. And I'm just going to blend that in really, really softly like that and you know what let's hide that and bring it back hide it and bring it back now, it's not looking bad at all maybe a little bit here i need to change but let's hide that and bring it back look at that very quick very easy and let's hide a little bit down the bottom there we go 
that is not bad at all is it let's press control and zero to full screen it and there we go i've just patched that in i might actually blend that one in a little bit what's the time now i ain't really got time to be honest with you i've not really got the time but i'm just thinking now that i probably would soften that edge off this this side looks cool but that outside i would soften off i haven't actually got the time but you've seen the skills that you need to to do that all right then you just add your color grading over the top there you go we have now improved this picture because that is a bloody eyesore right and sometimes you take pictures you find these areas and you know you can't help it it's just there isn't it you, you just can't help it i couldn't have gone anywhere else in this car park to get this particular shot i wanted a reflection in this water um i wanted the model to stand right dead center and that was in the way but knowing what i know in photoshop i knew it was quite easy to get rid of so it was a no-brainer for me i just took the shot um that is that one so i called that one adding is as good as removing now again i just want to uh, reiterate here this is a crash course all right now you're going to get emailed the recording so hopefully you can watch it over again and uh, pick up the tips but this is a crash course this sort of stuff in photoshop you probably would want to do um, a few times to get it right let's go on to the next example here which is to remove people from photoshop now this way of doing things let's just take a sip here is the easiest way and that is when you take multiple pictures so if you are doing street photography i'll tell you i'll tell you a really really typical example of this is that you're on holiday i don't know you've gone up london and you want to take a picture with big ben in the background and so does everyone else right there's tourists everywhere so if you took several pictures as these tourists were moving in and out of the frame you would have enough pictures to mask one out and mask another one out and then it would look like you've got one person standing there and everyone else has disappeared so wherever you can take multiple pictures if there's people in the background don't let it stop you taking a picture just take a few pictures and then you can mask them back out and you can mask them out in photoshop so this is a series of work that i've been working on um, street portraits i think street portraits are you know they're just fantastic they're really really challenging they're very challenging to get a good one as well and I, this was this is like one of my favorite ones as a matter of fact it's just it's that stare you know someone's just staring straight into your face don't know anything about this lady but she let me take her photograph and it just made me wonder all about her life to be honest with you you know it, it looks very mysterious what is going on why is this lady sitting all on her own like this um and it, it's the street portraits you put this up against a young person another person all the people that you take it creates a really nice series of work a really nice body of work but there's people in the background and i don't want them people in the background okay but luckily i took another picture as they walked through the frame so this obviously you've got this guy here he's going to walk through the frame look so now i've got one picture with him in the frame and this is the one i like and i've got one picture with him out of the frame so it's it's very easy i just mask through one layer to reveal the layer underneath now these are all handheld so the first thing that you need to do is align the pictures as best you can and when you're hand holding and taking a few pictures you're never going to get everything exactly are you if you're on a tripod you do but if you're handheld you're not but it doesn't matter because you're just going to mask them out and nudge it around to fit so first you select the layer the top layer we're going to take this the, the uh, opacity of that layer down there we go like that okay and then you're going to use the move tool and you're going to move that layer around until you get it to a fairly good point where things match up and you can use your arrow keys to nudge as well if you want to but i'm actually trying to trying to um match up the this um 
lamppost, I think it's a lamppost there. It's come down and up, yeah, okay. There we go, like that, that'll do the job. Bring the opacity back again, like that. Select the this layer here. Remember, you're going to mask through this layer and it's going to reveal that layer underneath. Now, masking is a really cool thing to do in Photoshop. Um, on my website or on my YouTube channel, I've got a whole video on layer masks, understanding layer masks. So you can go and check that out. But just to put it in a nutshell, a mask hides the layer that you are working on. Or reveals it it's as simple as that so let's uh, select that and I'm going to click on the mask add a mask add a layer mask icon down the bottom here and then I'm going to come over to the brush tool I'm going to make sure I'm on black and what's the opacity up here I'm going to change the opacity here to 100% alt right click move my um, brush so it's nice and big and a sort of softish brush like that and let's get rid of him just like that it's so easy it's so easy when you've taken a few pictures now the good thing about this particular picture is there was a section there was a like an edge this lamppost so it doesn't actually matter if it's slightly off because if you match it up to a line or a section then well, no one's ever going to notice, are they? So that's that there. And then, of course, we've got this guy over this side here. I'm going to right click and go a little bit smaller. Let's get rid of him again as well. And again, because I've got two trees here, it's not going to notice if it's a little bit off. So he's gone. He's gone. Now I've got a lovely clean image street portrait and it adds very nicely into my series of street portraits and it's lovely, okay? So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and I'm gonna hide that mask. I'm gonna bring it back. I'm gonna hide it and I'm gonna bring it back just like that. Now, it is quarter past eight. We've got 10 minutes or so of answering questions. Obviously I've got Photoshop open here so I can show you stuff if I get some questions and this that, and the other. Um, there's a bit of delay between you um, typing in here, and I've got I've already got a question there, and I'll answer I'll answer that in a second actually. Um, so yeah, so get your questions, start typing them in. In the meantime, I'm going to pay the rent. Okay, nothing is for free, guys. Now I am working tonight with. Let's go to the promo slide here. CliftonCameras.co.uk BenQ monitors and Calibrite um, products. Now, they're all fantastic products, right? I use them. And you've also got a percentage off if you go to cliftoncameras.co.uk, okay? So here is the deal. If you wanna monitor an SW monitor, these are pro photography monitors, I'll talk to you about them in a minute. You've got 5% off there. There's your code that you need to use. If you want a Calibrite screen calibrator or any of their products, you've got 10% off. It's a good deal. And you use that code there at checkout at cliftoncameras.co.uk. And then I'm going to sell myself at this point in time. I've got a whole Photoshop course. It's five star rated. And I don't even know how many fans. There's tens of thousands of people that have already taken that course and are taking it, right? schooloffotography.com go to courses go to photoshop check it out and you're going to get this in much more depth all right it's very hard to teach quickly in you know in in one hour but over there you're going to you know you really are going to get it in depth so it's there's there is only off the offer is till the 19th of april so make sure you get it in till since before that date right i am looking at a benq monitor here the sw27 I think it's the C. It is absolutely brilliant. I'm in my home office at the minute. At the office, we've got four people working. We've got a videographer there. There's me doing this, or two videographers, as a matter of fact, and me doing what I do on my monitor. They're all BenQ monitors. They're all SW monitors. We've got the 32-inch version, 
couple of the 27 inch versions, all 4K. They are absolutely right. They're an absolute game changer for, for us in work because I can work at home here and the colors that I see are exactly the same as when I get into the office. And it's the same with my staff when they're working in the office. They go home and work on their computers and they're looking at the same colors as well. And that is because they have calibrated their monitor with one of them calibrators. All right, I've got one here. This is an older, but it's actually the old, they're called Calibrite now and their old name was um, Xrite, but it's the same company. Anyway, there's one there. Very, very easy to use. It's an absolute game changer. If you want to be looking at the same colors that I'm looking at now, you need to calibrate your monitor. It's an absolute fact. Um, and yeah, go and grab them products. Right, it is question time. It's question time. And we have got a few questions here. Just give me a minute, guys. Sorry, this is not um, this is not like YouTube. I have to actually just have to look through. So I'm very sorry. You just have to keep me. So it says a couple of people here have asked how you add added the color grading. OK, let's go over to that image um, and let's open up the color grading box here. I'm going to hide it and bring it back. OK, so the first this is. There are many different ways to color grade an image. And um, again, we I show you this in the Photoshop course. I'll show you several ways to color grade images. In this particular instance, it was, firstly, let's hide them so I can reveal them one at a time. Firstly, I wanted to darken down um, this sort of strip of bright light. So I did that using just brightness and contrast uh, adjustment layer, and I masked it off. It's as simple as that. Then, then I added an S curve, all right? So let's, so this one has been graded using curves. There's lots of different ways to, to grade, color grade, but this particular image has been done using curves. I, I like using curves. It suited this image because I wanted that um, gritty car park look, with, which is the magentas and the greens and all of that. There were the green, you know, the greens, them strip lights, they give a green light. Curves seems to suit that, I, well, I think so anyway. So I put a general S curve in first, that one was easy. And then I added a color grading curve. So let's open up that properties box. So when you're using curves, you can break the image down into color channels, right? So in the blue channel here, I added blues into the shadows of the image. And then in the, was it in the green channel? Yeah, in the green channel, I added greens into the highlights of the image and th there we go it's actually quite a simple color grade it's actually just about having a little bit of knowledge of color as well but i saw basically i added blues into the concrete stuff i added greens into the highlights and you get this look it sort of looks well well it looks like it's in a car park i don't know where else to, to say but i've just enhanced that i suppose so that's without that look and that's with that look so hopefully that has answered um, them questions there. Let's see what else we've got here. Question from Ed. What if you didn't have a second image with the crowd removal? Well, it would be a lot bloody harder, Ed, I can tell you that much, right? Um, so you're talking about this, Ed. So if I just had, uh, okay, let's hide this mask for a minute. So if I just had that, if I just took that picture there, what would I do? Do you know what in this particular instance because it's street photography i probably would have just left it but you can start copying and pasting areas using the clone tool and you know doing things like that um on this particular image i can this section here would be good the feet because it's quite simply you've got concrete so you can copy and paste the concrete over the top the brickwork you could easily do that as well this with the bush that's going to be hard work man this one over here you could do because you could copy and paste this area and paste it over there and it's blurry no one would notice but the only thing i would say about this one is this bush here i'm not sure that you could do anything with it you might be able to take a, a section from here and put it over here you know mm, yeah so it would be it would be very hard with this particular image and actually uh, Ed, that's it's good that you brought that up because you know not everything is possible, uh, or it's actually it's think everything is possible, 
but sometimes it's a lot more harder than it's worth and you have to balance that out i think when you're working in photoshop is it worth your time or will it just look okay like this or do you use a different picture etc you know when you're taking pictures like this you take several anyway good question ed let's go on to another one uh and we go yeah anita there's a question from anita I, I, yeah I, I um that's the same question so anita's basically asking the same question hopefully i've just answered that for you anita uh question from martin could you go through the use of the gradient tool please well that's easy so the gradient tool is here that's the gradient tool and what the gradient tool does is it gives you a gradient of color from your foreground color to the background color if you've got it selected up here so up here in your options so this bar here this is the options to the tool that you select and just keep that in mind so if you need to change and adjust the way a tool works it's generally in the options bar at the top here right so you select the gradient tool um i just just unhide this for a minute let's put a new layer on there like that up the top here i've got lots of different ways of doing things so i can go down into basics and if i hover over with my mouse it tells me what's going to happen with the gradient tool so this one is saying foreground to background that one is saying foreground to transparent so the foreground color is is currently black go like that across your screen and there you go it goes from black the foreground color to the background color here which is white uh, which is what I've got selected if I went to that one there let's go back a stage in the thing so now I've got um, foreground to transparent selected I go across and it goes from the foreground color to transparent that's how you use the gradient tool uh, let's delete that layer thank you let's go on to the next one um, <clears throat> Oh, sorry, sorry, I've just clicked something. Now I've got it back. Here we go. Uh, could you go through the gradient? So I've done that one question. Would you? Uh, so here's a question from Matteo. We've got Matteo here. Do you have any suggestions on how to remove the red eye effect due to flash? In particular, uh, in bird photography, this phenomenon is much worse than with humans since the bird's eye are much more sensitive to flashlight uh yeah they are and i'm not sure anyway, do you use flash photography with birds <laughs> i'm not sure that's the done thing matteo you need to talk to some wildlife photographers but um when you to remove red eye really easy particularly if you're using lightroom if you're in lightroom there is a tool right at the top in what's called your tool strip and it is called red eye removal and all you do is you click on that tool you draw it over the red eye and it gets rid of the red eye for you you know these computers now this software is absolutely brilliant i think you've also got it in um adobe camera raw and adobe camera raw is you go to filters camera raw filter and let me just check if you have got it here here we go say it there red eye removal there you go or red eye it says there's a little video there that's showing you so there you go it's as simple as that so you would click on that tool in the adobe camera raw you would draw over this is not actually got any red eye so it's the computer's just going to say no in a minute and uh yeah there you go but you would draw over the red eye and the computer would get rid of it for you it's really really good i'm going to cancel that now uh sorry the other screen's come up now uh yes i do want to cancel that okay that's that one and let's take a couple more questions i think um there's one here from anita what do you recommend for removing let's say stains or wrinkles and something like curtains or a neck curtain Ooh. when you have when you have to correct the structure of it i think i get what you mean so like when you've got um curtains and you've got like a fold going down and you might have a stain on it right i would i would either use so let's just say that you've got a fold that's coming down like that all right the stains there but up there there's not a stain 
copy that section, move it down over the stain, and then use the free transform tool to bend uh, the copied selection so it matches around the, the curve where the stain is. Blend out with a mask, job done. You might use a bit of cloning as well, but that's what I would do because it's actually gonna be quite hard to use a clone tool because obviously you've got a lot of tone going around with the curve and stuff like that. So for me, it would be to try and find an area within the curtain that would match it, copy and paste it, put it over, free transform it to, um, to match it up. Right, um, let's have another question here. This is from Dan and it says, how to add a new, more picturesque sky to a landscape image? Well, Photoshop's got its sky replacement tool now, so you would you would just use that. I must admit, I, had, it's, I mean, it's fairly new. What is it, six months, maybe a year. They've had it in there. Lots of people rave about it. Lots of people say it's not that good. Um, I, partic I haven't used it, but I've heard some good things about it. So that's what I would do, the sky replacement tool in Photoshop, all right? Um, now, is there any more questions coming through? I don't think there is any more here. Well, I can't see any at the minute. Okay, so we are gonna leave it there, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure to teach this to you. It has been a crash course. Don't forget you've got all of this stuff here um, to get your discounts. I am, like, if you follow me, on youtube or you follow the school of photography i don't do these things very often i get asked a lot to do all sorts of different things and but i will only work with products that i trust and i know because my reputation is on the line right now i've used benq for years i've used calibrite for years they work right so when when i get asked to work with them obviously i do it so i'm not just saying that uh, i know it might sound like a sales pitch but you've got a discount here. And if I was you, and if, you was look, if you're looking for these products, and if I was you, I would use that discount, all right? Um, so I'm gonna say goodbye. It's been an absolute pleasure. Don't forget to come and see me over at the theschooloffotography.com as well. And um, I'll see you later, guys. Bye. <laughs>